Wow, that's great, man. I, uh, the other album that I really like, it, there are two, actually, I want to bring it to your attention. One is an, kind of an old one, well, 219, what, four years ago, uh, Dark Heart, uh, released in August 2018. What what memory do you have? For, because you, oh, have was... you have done, done 56, 60, or whatever. It, can you it, it, can you remember a little bit of... You know, well, that uh, one I remember because the, the label is Another Timber, which is a label in the and it's, it's together with um, John Abbey's erstwhile. It's oh. probably the best experimental label in the world. Got it. I mean, yeah, it's fantastic. And so I was like, "Wow, you you to release? You want to you want to release one of my things?" And they'd released another one, an earlier one as well. You know, which was yeah. so it's really really quite an honor. And I had been working with um, a Norwegian uh, called Turje Paulsen. Okay, and again, I've never met him, but we're back and forth and back and forth, talking back and forth on, on online. You know, and he's always, like, interested in paintings and things I've done, and he would say, wow, this one is kind of musical, isn't it, you know, which is how I got into the whole score thing because people started to see the, the musicality of the way I laid out the paintings. Absolutely, you know? yeah. And Absolutely. So Turge sent me, he, he does a, a lot of field recording in Norway, which, of course, and out there it sounds a lot different from the field recordings that are done here. Yeah, it goes a different place, right? And he sent me one. It was very interesting. He had some uh, sort of uh, a little bit of guitar work on it, but, you know, not not sort of playing the guitar, but just it would be a clunk, 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 and it would show up in, amongst all this wonderful sounds. And I said, I said, that's, yeah, I like that. I like that, right? And I said, I, I'm not sure what to do with it yet. So I sort of put it aside for a year. And then I was working on some other things, I had sort of lined up, and suddenly I went, wow, now that would work with what I've got of Turgi. So I pulled it out again, and, I, and then what I, I began to weave what I had into what I'd gotten from him a year ago, right? Yeah. And, it, and it, began, it just began to work really well. And It, it, it was just it was just sort of one of those sort of moments right and then it I, i'm not sure whether this this is the one i because i i did a couple of things using a sort of retired opera singer and you know i used a voice on a couple of things I, I don't like to use them on too many things because otherwise they start because the, a lot of these singers all sound the same you know so use it for a little bit so i it, that i may or may not have used her voice on that just towards the end but Again, it's 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 a sort of a, a, a collage approach. Ooh. I had this wonderful thing by Turje. I was not going to mess it up, you know. But you know, he's perfectly happy with, with me to take things down or out or move them a little bit, you know, to to fit mine. It, it, it's, it's never a case of okay, here's what I've sent you. You can't touch it. Just add what you've done because that would never work at all, you know. But the idea of being able to to, to work like this and then send it back to him. And then he's perfectly willing to say, well, I don't like what you did here, or I don't like what you did there. You know, and sometimes that happens. And then we just sort of go back and forth to see, you know, what it is that we need to make this recording, you know, as it is, you know. Absolutely. No, absolutely. Very, the way you put it is very, very excellent. Uh, it's another one uh, that is more recent, May 28, 2023. I think it's called The Pit. Yes. Uh, PAT. Yeah, it's another very interesting stuff, man. Okay, the pit. That's interesting. Yeah. The the pit and the one before that, which yeah. I released was Lakeside Blues with um Gil Sanson, and then the one that's coming out with Tim Clement. All three of those are yeah. to a degree related because I was there was a there was a way that I was working that I sort of continued to do through each of them. But the pit was kind of interesting because I I was sitting out here and I thought, you know, you keep, you, you've, you've done all these things, you've layered this, you put this on, you've got all this wonderful sound going on. I think it's time for you to take all this stuff and throw it away and just start with one thing. So what should we do? So I'm sitting here with my beer. And I finished yeah. the beer, got the mic on, and I just, so just started to crush the can. <laughs> yeah, and that was the first bit of it. And I went, that's it, just simple things. Mm -hmm. you know, then I had built a, um, I'd gotten this wooden box, put two uh, <coughs> piezo mics in it, <coughs> excuse me, 
and I had uh, these big rubber bands around it, and I had connected it to this one. I don't have too many uh, effects pedals, but I have one which is like a, a looper and does a couple of things which I use sometimes. And anyway, so I plug it, and I, and I pulled these back, and it sounded like a bass player. So I recorded that. You know? So this was really a work that I was very, very happy with because I had taken out all the extraneous stuff and I just left, right? Here's the beer can, here's the tin foil, you know, here's the little bit of the uh, sort of MIDI organ in here. You know, here's, you know, here's, here's, but, they, but it was not all pile one on top of the other. It was, it, it, it had been opened out a little bit. So I was, I was very pleased with that one. You know, that was the one that came out in the, uh, the on the Japanese label. Yeah. It's very, very interesting. Another another question, maybe somebody have asked you this question before or make comment on that. Let's say I didn't know you, right? And I didn't know you were a musician, right? And I only knew your painting, right? Somebody showed me a book or your painting, drawing, and so on so forth. I, I would have been my life that you have been involved with music. The way, so the way that I see your visual artwork, painting, and collage, or whatever you do. Uh, I, I would have been my life on it that you were maybe not a musician, but music was a very important part of your life. Um, the way that I am I'm able to uh, see your work. I don't know if I'm coming across. Oh, that's, I think that's very with a, Yeah, yeah, because I, I, I find the whole sort of painting thing, the way I do it now, I mean, when I was younger i mean i was just trying to do paintings the same as the people who are teaching me you know but when you sort of get a, get away from that and it almost become you know painting is almost like a dance to me i mean i always paint them on the wall i mean on this wall behind me you know with the things i've been working on i mean all the paint from the last sort of five years here all tape stuck on the wall it's all just there right but yeah. i I have all my pots and things lying at the bottom with brushes and that, and I'll come in, put up three clean sheets of paper, and then it just becomes like a dance. You just pick up this and, you know, and then just leave it, you know, and then maybe again, you know. So it is it is kind of like, and it is an, almost an instinctual thing that, you know, you know, it's almost like sound silence, like sound silence heavy light sounds you know so it does become like a, a, a sort of a, a musical thing i mean i don't think like that when i'm doing it i don't know what i'm thinking about when i'm doing it the idea for me is is, is if you're sitting there thinking about what you're going to do that's when you end up with a big illustration you know the idea is it has to be it comes from you the stuff has already been put into your head and your body over years of doing it so you don't have to think about when you bring the brush out well am i going to put it here or here, or here, or here. You know, it just comes out, and you just put it where it, where you put it. And it's it's it, again, it's it, it's almost like a a dance, you know. And I I, I do find that kind of a, a, a almost a, a musical approach to it. And, and people have commented on that, you know. And then the sort of layering of colors, where you've got very thin, and so if you look at it, it's almost like these different. Um, levels going backwards and forwards moving around you know so it's not just a flat thing you know this 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 you know it, it moves this way as well as up and down yeah got it perfect um so you you end up you know finishing your art school and you got married and then you you thought well i need to start going on my own and do my own way of you know my own painting my own sculpture my own my own way of looking at the world my way of looking at the world and then in the 40 you keep continuing it you become successful now you're going 60 80 now you're you're turning 80 is mm -hmm. it it's it have changed the art have changed for to you at all and your perception about the world and the reality and what you try to capture have changed a lot over time if i were, were to say seeing the stuff you were doing in the, you know, the 20s and 30s, 40, and have you kind of evolved in? Oh, you know? yeah, yeah. I mean, I was like, like everybody else, I was very angry when I was in my 20s, you know, <laughs> and when I was you know, coming up out of, out, of, out of the UK at that early time, and we we, we, we all loved, loved France bacon, you know, we paint all those twisted and 
bashed about figures and you know, like this, you know. But you know, you. I mean, as you as you sort of you know go go through life, I mean, all kinds of things happen to you. Some good, some tragic, or whatever, and these all have an effect on okay, yeah. On, on yourself, you know, and th I mean, this is really t to me the difference between you know illustrations of something and and paintings. You know, I'm not trying to illustrate. I'm not trying to use the paint to illustrate some other idea or some other notion. You know, the painting mm -hmm. is the painting. That's what it is. It's not representing something else. You know, it is that. And the same thing with, you know, approaching the, the sounds and that. I mean, I'm not trying to, you know, represent, you know, some other notion. I mean, what is there, that's what it is. What it's about is what you hear. That is what it's about. You know, I, of course, can't, I can't explain that too much in words. As somebody once said, you know, talking about art is like tap dancing for architecture. You know, can you explain your building? Oh, yes, so hang on, well, I put my tap shoes on. You know, I mean, it's so. So talking about <laughs> yeah. talking about these things is it, it's just it's just talk, and it's very. It doesn't explain things particularly well. You 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 know, I mean, you just try and put out a little bit of uh, the process, your approach to it, and what comes out at the end of that when you're doing it might have nothing whatsoever to do with what you just told somebody you were doing. Do you see what I mean? Right. It, it, if somebody were to come to you and commission you to a painting or 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 something for the living room or the house or it, it wouldn't work because you like you do what you would like to do not what somebody else would pay you no no i i couldn't do it i mean the closest that that i've got and that really isn't commission actually is that what this is just being put together now in the uk is a book coming out called trans posed heads which i've done with a guy called donald brackett who teaches at simon fraser university and he's a writer and his um his great uncle um charles brackett was uh, was um billy wilder's partner writing all those great uh, uh movies you know uh, in the 40s and 50s but yeah he was like interested in, in what i was doing his paintings right and then i started working on um sort of series of portraits but they weren't they weren't like you know look his, his uh, it was just i was you know and then i put up this oh, yes, and put and he started to, to 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 name them he said well this this reminds me of the author so and so then after about five of them i sent him an email i said donald can you stop putting names on these please <laughs> i said but would you be interested in if i just continue doing this and then you find something out maybe we can do a project, put something together. Well, what happens? I do 130 portraits in two months, right? And all sort of different. And he finds things in them that he thinks represents a specific person, even if it's something that that looks like one of their novels or something. I mean, I didn't tell. And then he's he sends me back these paragraph, 130 big pages of. Of, of this wonderful text about these characters. And so this is really the closest thing I've ever got to doing something like that. And, and it came in a, in a natural way, you know, that I was just doing these anyway, and he was seeing stuff. And I said, well, let's put the, the two things together, see if it makes any sense, you know. And then we found a publisher that thought it did. So, you know. Yeah, got it. Although do you, you do what you feel is more appealing to you, right? Our music... In, in terms of art, any, and the same question goes for music is any, you look if you like, you know, the last 40 years or 50 or whatever, in the, you know, if I group the painting on one side and the music on the other side, any major influences that you say, yeah, I, I used to listen to that guy or I used to go to a particular gallery or that book. I'm always looking at the book because, you know, the following painters, whatever the names are happen to be, are wearing important in my life and the following musician were important in my life that are what I, um, I I I drawn to to that kind of stuff or no well there's there's so many of them you know I mean that that I that I like and and I guess 
to a subliminal degree, I guess some you know the, the, you know you influence. I mean, if you as I said to somebody the other day, you know when he put, said to looked at one of my drawings, he said, "Oh, it's like F Philip Guston in the Fifth Dimension." And I, I just said, you know, if you do enough drawings, you, you're going to bump into everybody at some point. You know, sure. yeah, yeah. So, uh, I mean, you you can't just sit there with working and it never touches anybody else on the planet. I mean, you know, these things are all connected. You know, I mean, the only reason that we can be artists is because there were artists before. You know, this is not something we just invented out of nowhere. You know, we come based on sort of the traditions of, of hundreds and hundreds of years. And the same thing with with the music. You know, it, it sort of creeps along and makes these little changes and additions and things like this, you know. With, uh, I mean, I was mostly, most of the, the music that I I really loved was, was um, well, I liked traditional jazz a lot when I was younger, and I really liked um, all of the uh, all of the old uh, American blues. I got lots of a collection of American blues, and uh, and I liked a lot of contemporary jazz. I mean, I loved I loved Charlie Parker, and I I loved what he said to somebody one time. He said, "Well, I can't dance to your music." He says, "He says I'm he says I'm not I'm I'm an artist, not a performer. If you want to dance, go go somewhere else." You know, <laughs> I think that was rather good. And then, uh, of course, the great Charlie Mingus, you know, just, and these are, these are not things that necessarily give me direction myself, but I listen to them because they're beautiful. And I go, wow, that's great. I, I could never do anything like that, but it's so fantastic. And then I just do my own work. And then if I've heard something that's come into my head that comes out, I may not even notice it, you know. Things, everything comes in, you take everything in, and then things come out and you lay them down. And every now and again, you're bumped into somebody because, well, you, you do a lot of it. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Um, I, w I was talking to you before that I, I came across your work and your music. Well, I knew the music a little bit, but uh, recently, your, I, you know, uh, David Sylvian ended up releasing his 10 CD box with a book and uh yeah and it has a wonderful folder where you are so feel free to a lot of questions or feel free how you end up on uh meeting david or how david came across your work and, and your music and so so well, feel free to elaborate on that it's all luck isn't it basically yeah, <laughs> yeah. no no it's not luck in the world well, one of the really interesting things here yeah. is that david yeah. put out an album years ago yeah called oil on canvas <laughs> okay correct yeah and on the front of that and i didn't know about this until we yeah. was doing this right on the front of that was a painting by frank auerbach frank auerbach was my painting teacher okay and wow. david, david did not know that and then i told i said and he, i said that's really interesting david i said here's another connection between us i said frank auerbach was my painting teacher and he said no i said yeah he said, well, that's, that's about as ironic as you can get. And then he you know, told me how he'd bought one of uh, Auerbach's drawings for £2,000 when he was you know, young, not having a, a hell of a lot of money. And uh, he said it was a lot of money then, he said, but I had to have it. He says, um, and he said, unfortunately, I sold it a long time ago. But uh, I, I thought that was really kind of an interesting final connection there. And even though we had never personally met, the, mm. the, all these connections all the way down the line you know and he had been you know even bef before i mean he he he'd sent to a, a friend of mine very very complimentary uh comments about my work you know completely um, you know unasked for just out of the blue and i and i just sort of looked i went you know that's it, it's worth working if you if you can touch somebody i don't know them they don't know me it's it's just a work i said that's that's kind of good because it's easy to have friends of yours and you say, oh, I, I love that album you put out. Well, they're friends of yours. What are you going to say? I hate that album. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, of course not. Oh, yeah, it's interesting. But, you know, when you've got someone that you, you don't know who they are, you know, there's no advantage to them to say anything at all. Say something, you know, nice about the work you do. It's, 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 it makes it worth continuing, you know. It really does. It's, it's really nice. It's better than getting a whole pile of money. I mean, I don't need a whole pile of money. I mean, I'm okay. I ain't rich, but I'm, you know, I'm, I'm okay. So that, that kind of thing doesn't worry me that much, you know. But 
that, that kind of comment, you know, just out of the blue, you know, was yeah. I thought was was really nice, and I really appreciated it. Do you, you know who he was? I mean, some years ago before you start. No. No. Yeah. No, I, I I found out from because uh, I you know, I found out from my friend uh, from uh, Jamie Drawen because he knew yeah. who it was. he was a, a guy that grew up in the eighties. He's fifty, thirty years younger than me, but he yeah he knew yeah. all all the the, the the music in the from the eighties. It was the same as yeah. I told you about Freddie Mercury. I had no idea that, of that. Right, very well. Wow. Yeah, no idea. Yeah, you know, and David, no, no idea. You know, we were walking down the street one time and Jamie said to me, oh, look, there's a book of photographs there by David Sylvian. And I said, well, who the hell is David Sylvian? You know, <laughs> and I, uh, duh, I don't know anything. I'm just a dumb English <laughs> from London, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but it was, it was, and, and it was, it was from there. So it was, it was really quite, I like that kind of discovery. I mean, if I'd known who he was from the early pop music days, you know, then it wouldn't have been mm. quite as a surprise to suddenly find or oh, gee let me let me listen to this you know yeah, yeah. i i really enjoyed obviously we talked before right so i really enjoyed uh david silver work uh, as a musician and uh yeah and you know we before you know he was with J japan he formed a band with his brother and two other guys that i ended up interviewing and then um and also he worked with Ryushi Sakamoto from Japan that yeah, that yeah. right that recently and plus he kept done a lot of stuff on his own and with Robert Freep and other bands and so on and so forth. But uh he's uh he's a very good musician actually, you know. Oh yeah. And he worked with Derek um, Bailey. I love Derek Bailey's work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh it's a good I know you say before, well it's an accent. I don't, I don't believe in accent, man. Eventually so <laughs> it's very uh how can I say this? Uh, it's very easy, very difficult to connect the dot going forward. Yeah. Right. But it's very easy to connect the dot going backwards, if you will. You know, if you haven't have that teacher and, and, uh, you know, uh, your master and then, uh, you know, David even had, have not bought that painted for that guy and you, you yeah. want to see it. You know, so somehow it's, it's magic. really. Yeah, it's amazing. It's really amazing how, how these things happen, you know. And he's, as I say, he's been he's been very generous with his with his uh, uh, comments to me and, and you know using my work on his on his uh, albums. I mean, he sure as hell didn't have to do it, you know. But that I thought was really really nice, and I I I'd love to see that. I just got my copy. The box just arrived last week. Yeah, I got mine too. It's unbelievable. It's very very good stuff. Yeah, I mean every cent that. You know, come from Sylvia is is a special, like like your work. You know, so it's it. Are you? Um, I was looking at your painting on the website, and I'm interested in getting a couple of the small ones. So we need to. I need to ping you back. You know, with an email to get a couple oh. of them. Uh, and uh, it's very interesting stuff, man. Is it? Is it difficult to make a, a decent living? I mean, because you oh, know, yeah. some people, some people are. You know, you're 80, you're in very good shape, your memory works fine, you're doing a lot of work, you're energetic, you have an interview with a lot of people over the world. It's, you're in very good shape, man. So other people oh, say, yeah. hey, I'm 60, I want to retire, I want to drink beer, I want to move to, from this country, this and that. You're, you're very active, you're working, you're doing, you know, maybe making... Well, I mean, everything, smart. everything aches now, but... Uh... Yeah. For some reason, yeah, my mind still seems fine. I, I tend to forget people's names, but I mean, we yeah. all do. But it, it, it's interesting because uh, uh, David actually asked me one time, well, not that long ago, he said, uh, you know, because he's, uh, what is he now, 65 or whatever, and he said, he said, oh, you know, he says, how, he says, how, are, you, how, how are you doing? What was it like when you were 65, you know, 64, 65? I said, well, David, I don't want to appear like an ass, but... <laughs> When I was 64, I was training for a triathlon races. <laughs> what, what was his response? Just, <laughs> back a big smile. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that unfortunately had to come to an end. When I got to 65, I, 65, 66, I started getting, you know, the, the sort of pains you get inside your bones and stuff like that. Oh, okay, we've got to stop doing that. First, I stopped running, you know, and then I got my wrists and things. So I stopped cycling. I've still got my racing bike sitting here. 
And then the only thing I had left was swimming. And guess what happens? I get pneumonia. I went, oh, jeez. Okay, no more swimming. Now it's walking. Now we just walk. <laughs> what do you think is the, the importance of art, painting, or sculptural in society in general? It's, it's, it, it's fundamental, it's needed, it's a way for human beings to express themselves via painting versus music versus a book or how do you think the value of art in society well it's know. like you know i mean people have got to have something that's not just about you know working for a living and just they can pay rent you know and then, i mean it's i mean it's really what makes us human is the, you know this ability to you know, to take a language and make this make a make a, a poem from it or this or a, a novel or a story or you know, um, produce sort of, you know, visual works or, or, you know, music or sound or, you know, anything. I mean, these are the things that, 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 that really, uh, that, to me, make life worthwhile. I mean, if the, only, if the only thing there was was, you know, um, programming a computer all day, you know, or, you know, well, even, you know, I was going to say building a house, but I used to like building houses too. Carpentry is kind of a, Although it's sort of an exact, it's I, I, I enjoyed doing that because I enjoyed the, the cutting and everything else. But but the idea of um, being able to sort of just pull something out of your out of your head, you know, that's been it's got there through all of your experiences, all of your looking, listening, everything else, and managed to put it somewhere so that somebody else can see it or hear it. I think is is really what is the sort of magical thing about life. Yeah. Wow, it's amazing, man. Any in terms of music, any uh, any new project that you're working on nowadays? That... <clears throat> yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm actually waiting for a package from from Gil Sanson in in Venezuela. Yes. Yeah. yeah, he's got something else for me to do. And what else am I? Oh yeah, I I, I in the studio here. I have a, I have a young uh, young thirties, thirty five. Uh, guitarist, but he also designs synths and all kinds of things. He's real, really uh, deep into the whole music and music theory and everything. Can read everything, whatever. And he comes here, and uh, I hadn't seen him for a few years. We did, uh, we did an album together. His name is Dan Godlovich. We did an album together, um, which included Gil Sanson a couple of years, uh, two, three years back. But you know, he sort of said, you know. Uh, we need to get together again. I said, well, yeah. I said, y but you have to come over you know, at least once a week or once every two weeks. I said, because when we first start, I says, I have no idea what I'm doing or what I'm going to do. And I said, I always like to start with a notion that I don't have a clue what I'm doing because generally I don't. You know, it's like, okay, let's sit down here. And what he's working with is he's, he's using a um, uh, an empty uh, Octatrack sampler. Okay, he comes in, there's nothing on it. He plugs it in. And it's up to me to create the chaos, right? So, you know, I'll he'll plug it in. I say, we're ready to go. Don't forget to press record. We've been through that one before, doing entire performances, and you look and you hadn't pressed record. You sort of go, oh, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's. So, and, and then, I'll, you know, I might just pick up, you know, I might just take off my glasses. So, you know, and then he's got that. And then I just... And so it, it develops just from simple things. Now, the first whole set, you know, I just go, oh, yeah, no, I didn't know what I was doing, you know. And then the next time he comes, you know, I've, you know, I've done a little bit of thinking, I'm moving things, playing with things. And slowly, one builds up a, a palette of, of sounds and things, you know. So that's what I'm working on right now. It might, it might take us a year to get, to get what we want, you know. I just have to stay alive long enough to do all these things. That's the thing, you know. You're in very good shape, man. Don't say yeah. that. Sounds yeah, I, I'm okay. I mean, I, I can't, I can't, uh, I mean, when I was 64 years old, I could, I could run 10 kilometers in 41 minutes. Well, wow. right, man. right now, I doubt that I could walk one kilometer in 41 minutes. <laughs> so I'm a lot slower now, but you yeah. know, 
what the heck? You know, I, I, every time I've stopped looking at my old school friends or anything like that because every time I look up there, oh, well, he died twelve years ago. I go, oh, I'm going to stop looking for people. Yeah, you that's know, right. That's they're right. They're all in the ground. Stop looking. You know, that's right. Feel free to uh, mention your um, your website, Lance, where people are listening to this podcast can buy your painting, your music, and your channel in Bad Camp, whatever. Feel, feel free to mention that. So oh. I will put the links on there. On the well, that'd be great. Yeah. Well, our our sort of gallery website, which which also links to to yeah. um in frequency uh, Bandcamp and all that kind of things. It's it's in frequency yeah. org. Yeah. yeah. And I'll I'll actually send you that too. You know, yeah. And it, it's got a link tree, and it'll link you to um you know yeah. to the gallery. It links and that gallery links to my website. Yeah. And, and and we're always changing that because you know we're. we're as my buddy Jamie says, you know, there's no point just putting up a website and leaving it there. He says, we've got to try and sell some of these things on here. So we just keep changing them around, you know. And I said, that's fair enough. You know, it's a good thing to do. And it also uh, gets me to photograph uh, things properly as opposed to, you know, <laughs> not very well and putting them up. You know, you know Jamie's well, a, a, is a photographer and he says, you cannot put that up. Bring those over. I'll photograph them properly. So that's always been good for me. So I get good documentation of work. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> good for you, man. Hey, Lance, it was very, very nice talking to you. And hopefully I will, you know, meet you one day. I'm interested in a couple of your stuff as well. I will send you an email and uh, say hello to David Silver when you talk to him. And it was very I nice will. talking to you. I will. You're, you're, you're very good at your... Quiet, humble, but you're very good at what you do for a living. Right? Well, I hope I didn't ramble on too much, but but I, I'll send you um, the 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 links to the gallery and the websites, and that would be kind of nice if you mention them. You of know, course, got, I will. I will. Yeah, uh, I will. Uh, we got a couple of things coming out. I'm working on some uh, series of uh, eight by eight um, books, which are just drawings, and then yep. have an original print in, and they're they're relatively inexpensive, you know, because you know the, the paintings are expensive. I can't give them away, but we try and put out stuff that somebody who's got 120 bucks can actually afford it, you know? Yeah. But on the other hand, they cannot have a 10 foot painting that's taken me a lifetime for 120 bucks. I'd sooner burn that's it. Right. Well, you have <laughs> stuff for 300, 700, 3000, 8000. So it's, yeah. you know, different price Absolutely. ranges. So everybody could, some rich people could afford the eight grand, you know, some people Absolutely. could afford only 500, whatever, you know, so but it, it's very good stuff. And, and, uh, Keep on working hard. I'm quite sure that we'll do a follow-up interview very soon, Lance. And it was very nice uh, talking to you, man. Well, it was nice talking to you. And thank you very much. And I will send you those things. And uh, Okay, I'll, great. I'll, I'll for you. Have a great evening, man. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.